Cadillac originated from Ford, specifically the Henry Ford Company. But when the company was split apart due to disagreement of direction from the investors, Henry Ford's half became the Ford Motor Company we know today, and the investor's half became Cadillac, under Henry Leland. The name was taken from one of the French explorers that founded the city of Detroit, Antoine de la Moth Cadillac. Both companies offered practically identical Model A's for 1903, but would soon be going in different directions. Ford would focus on development and experimentation, while Cadillac would focus on precision and quality. Not surprisingly, Cadillac would be the better seller. It would also be the first and only car company to win England's Dewar Award for Engineering Excellence, in this case given to them for demonstrating the interchangeability of parts by disassembling three engines, mixing up the pieces, and putting them back together. Perhaps not the only company able to do so at the time, but the first to prove it at an international level, allowing them to claim themselves as the standard of excellence. In 1908, Cadillac would be taken under the control of GM, allowing them to team up with Delco to create the first electric starter as part of an electrical system that included the battery, generator, starter, and electrical lights, and winning them the Dewar Award for a second time in 1911. In 1915, Cadillac became the first company to offer a V8, but with World War I, Henry Leland left the company to adapt Cadillac engines for aircraft use, creating Lincoln. And soon, Packard would surpass Cadillac as America's leading prestige brand. 1927 would introduce a less expensive companion make to Cadillac called LaSalle, after the other founder of Detroit, René Robert Cavalier Sour de LaSalle. It would be the first car to take advantage of GM's new art and color division a design studio aimed at competing with the independent coach builders. In the face of the Great Depression, Cadillac introduced a V16 in 1930 and a V12 in 1931, and the first full steel, or turret top, roofs arrived in 1935. Throughout, V8s would remain their best sellers, but without the backing of GM, Cadillac wouldn't have survived the Great Depression. With total sales dropping below 3,500 in 1933 from a norm closer to 20,000, the V12 would only survive until 1937, and the V16 to 1940. LaSalle would also be discontinued after 1940, effectively being replaced by the low priced Model 61 Cadillac. Cadillac would also get Oldsmobile's new Hydromatic Automatic Transmission for 1941 boosting sales dramatically to over 65,000. Like other companies, car production stopped during the Second World War to help with the war effort. In this case, by building Stuart tanks. The post-war redesign of 1948 was unusual for the conservative Cadillac, and then it was a radical departure from the previous model. Not only was the redesign significantly more modern, it introduced an all-new styling feature, the tail fin. And by the beginning of the 1950s, Cadillac would once again be outselling Packard, climbing above 100,000 as Packard sales declined, allowing Cadillac to take the lead in the American luxury car market. Power would climb rapidly in the 1950s, easily doubling over the decade from 160 in 1950 to 340 in 1960. And in spite of a rather conservative styling policy, they played with expanding into greater markets with special editions. First, the convertible Eldorado in 1953, later called the Eldorado Barretts, followed by the Eldorado Seville Coupe, and then with the limited production Eldorado Brahm sedan of 57 and 58. As fins became more popular, Cadillac fins became more prominent. And as fins started to fall from favor in the early 60s, Cadillac had both a fin and a skeg, or an inverted fin, which clearly didn't hurt sales, as Cadillac was outselling all its competitors combined by this time. Cadillac even passed on a new LaSalle personal luxury coupe as beneath them, a car that would become the Buick Riviera. But their tune soon changed, and they introduced a new front-wheel drive Eldorado into the segment for 1967. 
A car that would start with Cadillac's massive 340 horsepower 7 liter V8 that would be upgraded to a 375 horsepower 7.7 liter V8 the second year, and then a 400 horsepower 8.2 liter V8 in 1970. And this was their smallest car at the time. Although at 221 inches long on a 120 inch wheelbase, it's hardly what we would consider small today. Its biggest of the period would be the 75 Fleetwood, a series of factory limousines produced by Cadillac from 1936 to 1987. In the late 60s, that meant a car 245 inches long on a 150-inch wheelbase. In fact, Cadillacs had become so large as to be impractical in virtually every other country in the world. The solution to this was simple. Stop exports to most other countries and focus on where profits were with U.S. sales climbing above 300,000 by 1973. But soon, Cadillac was seeing the big Mercedes start to take a piece of its pie. The response was the new Seville, based on a modified Chevy Nova platform, but with everything you would expect from a Cadillac. And many critics considered it least as good, if not better, than the Mercedes. But that didn't mean that Cadillac wasn't soon downsizing and cost-cutting along with every other GM division. And although Cadillac still retained some independence from other GM divisions, this was sort of a mixed bag. Overall sales dropped back below 250000 for 1980, partly due to the recession and partly due to its disappointing new bustle-back Seville. In an attempt to stay cutting edge, Cadillac introduced a new 368 cubic inch 6 liter V8 with cylinder deactivation in 1981. Called the 468, suggesting it used just the amount of cylinders you needed, except it didn't really work all that well, as computer technology of the time wasn't up to the task. In 1982, Cadillac introduced the new high technology engine family that would be the last fully Cadillac engine. A smaller, lighter, more economical V8 starting at 4.1 liters and eventually climbing to 4.5 and 4.9 liters and would be Cadillac's primary power source into the mid-90s. But they were once again seeing new threats from import markets, this time with the compact luxury market. The half-hearted response was a fully loaded version of GM's J-Body called the Cimarron that looked remarkably similar to the Chevy Cavalier it was based on. While other Cadillacs would continue to become smaller and more like their less expensive GM counterparts, but big traditional Cadillacs were where commercial sales came in. As the old saying goes, everybody rides in a Cadillac once, even if it isn't in their life. The North Star system was introduced in 1992 that included a 4.6 liter dual overhead cam V8 developed by Oldsmobile, a four-speed automatic, road sensing suspension, variable power steering, four-wheel disc brakes, and a 100,000 mile service interval. Then Cadillac would once again attempt to compete with the compact luxury cars from Europe, this time by rebadging an Opel Omega as the Katera, with only slightly more success than the Cimarron. Then, Following Lincoln's lead for once, Cadillac got a version of the GMC full-sized SUV as the Escalade for 1999, which turned out to be a surprise success. But after 50 years, Cadillac would once again lose its place as America's top-selling luxury brand in 2001, falling behind Mercedes, BMW, and soon Lexus. Not that sales were dropping, still well above 200,000, but its competitor sales were climbing. In response, traditional names were shortened to initials, starting with the Katera Touring Sedan becoming the CTS, followed by the Seville becoming the STS, and the DeVille the DTS. Name changes that came with a new art and style design language and introduced the new V-Series performance package. Then the Eldorado would be replaced by the Corvette-based XLR. But before the end of the next decade, sales would begin to decline, dropping below 200,000 in 2007. Since then, names have become more meaningless, with all the cars being a CT-something and the SUVs an XT-something. But the cars themselves have been more competitive. 
In 2018, the 550 horsepower Blackwing Twin Turbo Dual Overhead Cam V8 was introduced, gaining much praise from critics, but Cadillac sales still dropped below 150,000 in 2020. Like every car company these days, Cadillac is insisting its future is electric. As electric cars are still expensive and impractical, they make more sense as a luxury item than a popular model. But will this lead to a Cadillac revival or its ultimate demise? What do you think? Let me know in the comments below. And as always, thanks for watching, and don't forget to like and subscribe. Thank mm -hmm. you.